hi and welcome to class 10th the very first thing that i would like to tell you all that class 10th is very very easy in comparison to class 9th the students who usually score 60% in class 9th usually get 90 or above in class 10th because all the topics that you will be studying in your class 10th will be an extension of the already studied topics like you have studied the lenses in class 8 you have studied the uh, charges and you have studied electromagnetic induction electrolysis in class 8 all these topics will be extended in your class 10th myself sushil man and i will be taking the physics portion of your class 10th so uh, without wasting much time let's come straight to your topic the very first chapter that we'll be covering in your class 10th syllabus it will be electricity all of you are well aware that what is electricity and you are using it in your daily life most of your uh, most of your day to uh, day needs the electrical gadgets that run on this form of energy that is called as electricity now without going into the depth of electricity let us uh, recapitulate what you have studied in your previous classes the very first thing that you have studied that there are two type of objects and these objects they can be charged or they can be neutral charged objects and neutral objects neutral objects means they do not have any charge charged objects means they carry certain charge the charge they can be negatively charged or they can be positively charged and you have already studied that the like charges they like charges they repel each other and the unlike charges unlike charges they attract each other unlike charges attract each other this is the very first thing and the basic of your this particular chapter now that this thing you have studied in the first part that is the static current or sorry the static charges means the charge they are not in motion in class 10 you will be studying its first extension that is electricity or electric current current simply means anything in motion anything in motion suppose air is in moving air is moving you call it as wind or you can also call it as air current water is moving you call it as water current similarly whenever the charges they are flowing you call it as electric current now the good thing is you are already aware that there are a lot of neutral objects around us but how can you charge any neutral object and you are well aware that by rubbing a plastic scale with your hairs you can charge it or no why just only a plastic scale you can even charge your plastic pen by rubbing it against your hairs now means frictional force it can be used to charge any insulator now the good thing is how do you uh, what is the basic fundamental behind the transfer of charges or what is the basic thing regarding charging any object all of you are aware that everything around us it is made up of very tiny particles they are called as atoms and the atoms they are electrically neutral why they are electrically neutral because the atoms they have equal amount of equal amount of negatively negatively charged electrons negatively charged electrons and uh, positively charged protons this equality of positive and negative charge makes an atom electrically neutral when you rub a plastic scale with your hairs electrons from your hairs are transferred to scale transferred to your plastic scale so that is why the scale becomes negatively charged and your hairs become positively charged this is the basic thing behind transfer of electrons by rubbing anything or uh, this is the basic thing behind stop okay the second thing is you are aware that the like charges repel each other unlike charges they attract each other but what will happen when a neutral object is placed near a charged object Okay, you can get this question. You can uh, get the answer to this particular question by uh, taking a scale, rubbing it with your hairs, 
and then using it to attract certain pieces of paper. Those pieces of paper they are neutral and the scale it is charged. So the charged object they also attract the the charged object they also attract the neutral objects. Fine. Okay, the charge is usually measured in terms of a unit called coulomb. Now the coulomb it is the SI unit of it is the SI unit of electric charge. The charge on one electron it is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. Sorry, it is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb means it is very very small amount of charge. Similarly, the charge on a proton, the charge on a proton is positive 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb means the charge carried by an electron and proton are equal in magnitude but they are opposite in signs one is positive other is negative okay uh, this, this was about the static, uh, static charges now what happens when the charges they begin to flow the charge in motion the charge in motion it is called as electric current is called electric current and in other words or in you can say in scientific language you can say the amount of charge flowing through cross section of a conductor in unit time it is called as electric current so you can say that what is current current is equal to the amount of charge flowing per unit time as you are aware that the uh, charge current is represented by i charge is represented by q and time is represented by t now when we talk in the scientific terms we say the si unit of current is coulomb the si unit of time is second so when one coulomb of charge is flowing through cross section of a conductor in one second then we say that one ampere is the amount of current flowing through the cross section of that particular conductor so this is the basic thing regarding the current and its flow. Now the thing comes when charge is flowing how will we measure that current? The amount of current is measured with the help of an electrical equipment, electrical gadget called ammeter. The ammeter it is represented like this in scientific terms. Now the second thing is the uh, current it is a scalar quantity I am repeating it current is a scalar quantity and the ammeter it is measured with the help of ammeter the ammeter is always connected in series circuit it is always connected in series circuit now the reason behind its connection in series circuit is that in a series circuit the current in a series circuit, the current remains constant. Current remains constant. That is why the ammeter is connected in series. It can be represented in a simpler way. Suppose this is the direction of current. This is the gasset through which we want to measure the current then the emitter will be connected here like this got it how current flow in a conductor the conductor can be a wire simple wire that can be of copper or silver or aluminium or food that can uh, be of iron also any conductor we can say every conductor as usual again it will be made up of certain atom but there are two type of elements, uh, there are two type of uh, objects uh, that we can say with regard to the flow of charge through them. One that allow the flow of charge in them, another one that do not allow the flow of charge in them. Those objects that allow the flow of charge in them, they are called as conductors and those objects that do not allow the flow of charge in them, they are called as insulators. Now what is so special in a conductor? The conductor, it has certain electrons 
that are freely moving from one atom to the other atom, they are called as the free electrons or they are also called as the conduction electrons. Now, suppose we are having this wire or this conductor and we are, I am representing the atoms here. The central part represents the nucleus and these are the electrons. I am representing only one electron per atom though there can be many electrons. This one electron is the conduction electron that can easily move from one atom to the another atom. Now these electrons, they freely move from one atom to another atom. They jump from one atom to another atom. They can move in this particular direction. They can move in this particular direction. Means they randomly keep on moving from one atom to another atom. But the net flow of electrons across the cross section is zero. This is the cross section you can say. Net flow of electrons across this cross section is zero. So there is no current flowing through it. Now, what happens when what happens when we apply some electric potential across it? What happens when we apply a cell or a battery across it? Till the switch is off, till the switch is off, no current will be flowing through it. Now, suppose we tap this E and the switch is put on, or you can say the switch is on. Now, what will happen? We, apply, we have applied the electric potential and this will be forcing these electrons to move from one end to the another end, the electrons, they will be moving from this 